Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. I'm sitting in the car right now. I have just dropped Ingemar off for an interview, which fingers crossed, this could be a really exciting move for him. I'm not gonna say too much about it. I'm getting nervous for him. Mia is at the Dag Mama. Um, she has been there for two weeks now. We did a transition week and she's loving it so far. It's going really, really well. So when we got our space at the Dag Mama for Mia, Ingemar and I had a, a bit of a chat and he said to me I really want you to take two weeks where you don't do any work and you just kind of have me time. Now I thought it was a fabulous idea but obviously in reality um, I'm in the second week of it and I've pretty much done work every single day. I've not been hardcore working hours whatever I've just been kind of doing bits and bobs tidying up the website writing blog posts doing Instagram pictures um, filming <laughs> right now um, yeah so basically doing work I've also done I think three commissions yeah so catching up on a lot of work um, so today is the first day where I've actually not done any work I got up with me at five o'clock because why? Why does she need to wake up at five o'clock? I got up with her, we had breakfast together, we played, got her dressed for going off to the Dag Mama and Ingmar walked her there. So I've kind of had like an early start and then I went back to bed, which was a disaster. I shouldn't ever do that, but I did. And I kind of had a lazy morning um, with a coffee in bed, my pajamas on and just chilled, which really is what Igmar meant me to do <laughs> for the last two weeks but I've been rubbish and haven't done it. Dag Mama is for anyone who doesn't know um it's basically like daycare so it's a, a day mama here in Iceland which is really really nice um the lady that we have is very local to us so we can walk to her um and yeah she looks after four other children can you imagine looking after five children for a day but Mia was definitely ready for this and we were kind of ready for it as much as you can be I miss her so much um it comes and goes and I just I have to just realized that I can't be selfish and hold on to her all the time she needs to go out and um discover the world and make friends and um yeah just kind of you know not be stuck with mummy all the time another thing I've had to get used to about dag mama is that Mia sleeps outside you know if I had still been in the UK or something I might have thought this is kind of a crazy idea and dangerous and I'd be watching over my child and whatever but I've got used to it in this country um you see babies just sleeping out in their buggies and their prams all the time in Iceland you see them in, in you know outside restaurants cafes even downtown in the high street but yeah in people's gardens they're just they're there and it's completely safe <laughs> and that's one of the things I love about Iceland is how safe it is and that when we're walking to the Dag Mama I see these really small children walking their own way to school and the parents don't have to worry about them I remember looking after my nephew who was I think he was seven at the time and he he was gone off to school and I walked behind them and pretended like I was going somewhere because I was terrified and that's just it's so sad that I am aware of what could potentially happen and worry about it and that's in the forefront of my mind instead of just relaxing into it and knowing like it's okay <laughs> that they'll be fine so yes Mia sleeps outside and as much as the Dag Mama and every Icelander said she'll sleep much longer outside and I was like oh we'll see we'll see what about the snow and the rain whatever but she does she sleeps for three hours which is the longest Mia's ever taken a nap for um Mia is definitely a 20 minutes to 45 minutes nap girl now I'm home all on my own no little person a nice hot cup of coffee and the place to myself for now, I am basically in a transition period between being a mummy and finding myself again, which if you are also a mum or a new mum, you know what that feels like. And it's super strange because I have been with Mia pretty much 24 seven for 14 months now. Um, either myself or Ingemar has been in the room with her pretty much all the time I mean, obviously she sleeps in her own room but uh, yeah we're basically with her all the time so it's really strange to kind of go out on your own now um 
I do things. I don't have my little buddy with me, which is it's weird and I'll just end up getting emotional. So there is the big thing of mum guilt and I definitely think that mum guilt is a real thing. I don't know how many of you feel this but like mum guilt is kind of, you're, you're guilty either way. If you're being a mum and you're with your child which is amazing and there's so many mums that do it and juggle everything. Um, I have definitely felt guilt when Mia has been fast asleep in her cot not needing me, not needing my full attention or whatever uh, quite happily napping away and I've done a bit of work and I felt so guilty for doing that but I've also felt so guilty for not being the one that's like supporting the family financially um, I do my bit here and there where I can with products and with the shop and with these videos and Instagram collaborations and whatever I do pretty well through all of that um, but it's a lot of work at the same time and it does take me away from Mia sometimes so yeah it's hard to make the decision of what you want to do and sometimes I get it like you can't even make that decision because it's just made for you mum guilt is a horrible thing um, yeah emotions emotions in the mind it all plays games on you for those of you who don't know I run a website called layoutlines.com it is an online place for students entrepreneurs um, startups to basically kind of go to and get information uh, motivation connect um, inspiration and all sorts of things uh, there's online courses there's a free library of resources there's a whole load of different blog posts and there's a lot of Iceland content as well so I have a shop with my prints and products and yeah these videos and Instagram and collaborations and a whole load of different things so basically in this time I have been kind of implementing some of the ideas that I've had over the last year so I have ended up actually working because I'm really bad at just taking a break. Uh, <laughs> I have also been doing a few things that I wanted to kind of do for me. So things like joining the gym. I haven't really worked out since I was, I don't know, like late into my pregnancy. I kind of stopped. Well, actually, I was. that's not true. I was doing Aquafit, um, which wasn't really strenuous but I was doing that right up until I had Mia um, and I loved it I miss Aquafit so much so basically swimming that's what I've started with and today I am going to go to the gym with Ingmar and he's gonna kind of be a personal trainer which this will be the third time lucky because he has tried with me before um, and both times were kind of fails I have decided that I'm gonna keep an eye out for jobs and see what kind of is of interest to me here in Reykjavik but I'm gonna focus on layout lines so I I'm excited about this because I have so many ideas and things that I want to do with my company um, I have kept on my phone in Evernote a massive long to-do list of ideas and projects and things to do um, that I've just been adding to throughout the last 14 months so it's this huge long list now and I'm starting to kind of implement some of those ideas but obviously I'm not back to work yet so I need to make sure that I'm using this time to relax a little bit um, and kind of just not go from mum 24 7 to mum and layout lines and actually find Sonia somewhere in that again <laughs> which is quite difficult to do um, so yeah, I'm I'm kind of getting ready to go back to work. So that's what the aim of these two weeks are, which sounds blissful, but you do feel mum guilt for it. <laughs> um, someone else is looking after my baby and I'm sitting in my bed with a coffee and pyjamas. That's mum guilt right there. So as someone who is a great believer in lists and making lists and to-do lists and ticking off lists and whatever, I have a list on my phone of things that I want to do in the, these two weeks to try and kind of enjoy this buffer time and make the most out of it. So the first one is rejoin the gym and try some classes. Swim and sit in hot pools. Go to the cinema, bake and cook. Because we're doing the 30 day no spend challenge, I have been so good at this. Like seriously, seriously strict. I don't think I've spent anything 
this month so far other than postage and that was for business related stuff you know aside from bills and whatever i've had people over for coffee and i made scones and flapjack and pancakes for the children so i've not spent any money like meeting up with people and going for coffee like i normally would and cook i've done a lot of cooking and i've used up so much stuff from the larder from our cupboards from our fridge and from our freezer our fridge is pretty much empty. Deep clean the apartment. Now, I know this is thrilling, absolutely thrilling stuff, but when you spend a year of kind of cleaning whenever Mia naps for 20 minutes, then your, your apartment just isn't really clean clean. So I really, really want to deep clean the apartment, which is actually something I've been putting off because it's not really a fun thing to do, is it? And when the weather is like this, you want to go outside in Iceland because it's not like this for very much longer. It will be snowing in no time. We've done the kitchen. We have done such a good job on the kitchen. It took us two days, which is pretty shocking. Not cleaning, but decluttering things. And just the Viking has so many things from his childhood that we just don't need. Um, and I get being, you know, like nostalgic and holding on to things, but kind of a bit crazy a bit of a hoarder <laughs> so i don't want to turn into a minimalist don't worry i would say i'm more minimal-ish and that's kind of where i want to get to so i want we have a, a decent size apartment but it is on the smaller side um and three of us now and mia has a lot of toys a lot of clothes just a lot of stuff um and she takes over half the sitting room <laughs> but I do want to have a massive declutter of just everything in general because I don't really have the time anymore to be looking for things. I need to know where they are and grab them easily before running out the door with my hands full. The next thing is to catch up with friends that I've not seen for a long time. Now, this is probably completely normal. When you become a mum, you kind of have this group of friends that you just don't see. And it's not because like you mean to avoid them or they're avoiding you or whatever they're just not kind of baby people or whatever whatever the reason is um so there's this group of friends that I want to reconnect with and I guess they're the people that will help me kind of tune into who I am again um, obviously most of it will be done by me <laughs> finding myself again but you know getting back into that life that you had before and yeah sure some parts will change and some things have changed but I wouldn't change anything back at all <laughs> I want to meet up with those friends um, and that might also mean getting back into roller derby I'm not quite sure yet I feel like this is quite a big I don't know like a, it's something that I really was getting into it. I'm not sure. I, I feel like it's just a bit of a scary sport. I mean, it is a scary sport, but I don't know if, like, as a mum, do I really want to be putting myself out there where I can get hurt? <laughs> I miss the team camaraderie and everything, but I'm just not sure if I want to potentially be injured. <laughs> And on a business related note, I have managed to make a few contacts here uh, with local artists and designers, which is super exciting and I really want to meet up with them. So I'm going to try and organize a couple of like networking sort of meetings um, and potentially have some business contacts, but friends as well. Um, yes that's another thing like making new friends in a new city a new area or whatever it's kind of nerve-wracking isn't it making new friends as an adult is so different but Mia's taking her big chances and making new friends so mummy's gotta do it too and then the last thing is books and flights so i'm going to i'm gonna look into them right now and depending on kind of how much they cost and what it's looking like because it is no spend um September. I'm not sure if I'm gonna spend the money and book the flights now, although that would be stupid to just use that as the reason not to and then the flights go up. So I'm gonna have a look at what there is, um, but I have a couple of weddings coming up that are very very exciting and so I definitely want to attend and with the family so we need to get booked. Um, they are for next year so they're you know we're being very organized and getting them booked now I need to look into that as well.
So there you go, that's a kind of quick overview in the car <laughs> uh, whilst I wait for Ingemar to do this interview. Um, Mia is possibly still asleep when her fabulous three hour nap, wouldn't we all love a three hour nap? I am enjoying a beautiful view across Reykjavik and I'm just scarily going to go off to the gym now with the Viking and probably get my butt kicked. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell button so that you get notified of any new videos that are coming and hopefully you will see another video or vlog from us soon. Thanks for watching, see you soon.